Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's live virtual kitchen show. Well, we have one of our favorite guests back. Um, an awesome company, Maple Leaf Food Service of Canada is back here. So I'm going to introduce everyone. We're going to turn the cameras on here and see everyone and wave everyone in their virtual rooms. Um, but uh, anyways, let's move on. Let's, let's, let's get started. we got some amazing ideas today. And it's my favorite subject. And it's something that I think is, uh, I wouldn't say it's a trend. And I hopefully we don't use that trend word too often today, but I think it's the way of the future. And uh, I'm going to just turn off this part of the camera right here and we'll say hi to everyone. Give me a second here. Here we go. So, welcome everyone to our show. Chef. Good day. Welcome back. Excellent. So, we, are, we have Brad and Violet on the, on the call today from Maple Leaf. And We've got some great, amazing stuff that they're going to talk about around plant-based and what you guys are doing at Maple Leaf around uh, around this area for the business. So welcome to the show. Do you guys want to kind of introduce yourselves and who you are and what you do? Well, I'm the easy one. So it's uh, I'm James Kepi. I'm the corporate chef for the food service division of Maple Leaf Foods. So this is our uh, third go-around, Jay, and uh, we'll see what, what the plant-based world can have for you guys today. It's awesome. So Brad, what do you do? Brad, what do you do? Brad, you're up. Yeah, so uh, I'm Brad. Uh, I uh, facilitate the sales um, for Greenleaf within Canada. Uh, I've been with Maple Leaf for about uh, nine years. And funny enough, uh, Chef and I started on the exact same day uh, nine years ago. So been on the Greenleaf side uh, since the start of the year and uh, excited to see how things are going. So. Oh, Violet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Violet Baker. I'm the Director of Product Development for Greenleaf. I have been at Maple Leaf for 12 years and have spent the past two years working on uh, plant-based products, which is super exciting. And I'm here to answer any uh, product questions that you may have or technical uh, questions. Cool. Right. Awesome. So, Chef, do you want to move back to you there? Yeah, so no, we're we're gonna we're gonna start off with Brad. Brad's got a few uh, slides to show us and and uh, a bit about the company, and then we'll start getting into the products. We've got five or six products today. We're gonna take a look at, and it's it's a full range. We're gonna go through too. It's not so we're we're definitely gonna be looking at the pea protein uh, that we're using for the burgers and a few other new products, along with some tofu and some tempeh items as well. So it's a it's the full gambit. But uh, we'll let Brad go to the next step here. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Jay, ready to go? You bet. Go for All it. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So like, as I mentioned, uh, Greenleaf, um, actually subsidiary of Maple Leaf, has two, two specific brands, um, very, very much alike, but very different in their own right, Light Life and Field Roast. Uh, lots of awareness for sure on the East Coast uh, with Light Life. Field Roast, for the most part, is um, uh, very well known in the West, initially out of Seattle, uh, and Light Life is out of uh, Massachusetts. Um, for the most part, the brands kind of represent clean eating, uh, fewer ingredients. Uh, that's kind of where we've we've put our flag in the sand there. Um, the way I kind of envision it as a plant-based guy myself is um, uh, Light Life for the most part is, is really appeals to the flexor, the flexitarian. Uh, and then Field Roast, a lot more artisanal, uh, a lot more kind of flavorful notes, um, things like that. If you guys have tried the product, uh, lots of rosemary. Uh, sage and things like that. So anyway, that's kind of our, those are our two kind of flagship brands. Um, we did some work recently in the slide you're looking at now. I won't run through too much of this, but um, I don't think this will surprise anybody, but we did some work um, with, with the consulting group to kind of rep kind of recognize who our core consumers are and kind of why they're doing it. Uh, and it was just the most important thing. And no surprise here, like you can see of the 2000 ish people that we, we pulled, um, half of which are already users of plant-based, half of which are considerers, what would be deemed considerers. Health is, uh, is, is first and foremost there. Um, and you can see some of the numbers there. The, um, the two things on here that I, that kind of surprised me when I saw this research back, it didn't surprise me, but I, I find them interesting is, is, is the, you know, almost a quarter of, of the people polled, uh, believe it's cleaner than meat. So plant-based meat would be cleaner than meat and safer than meat. Um, obviously some of the food safety issues and stuff. But um, I don't think this this slide would surprise anybody. What's more exciting, I would say, is 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 the next slide. Um, now, Brad, but before we move on here, is this yeah. is this pre or post COVID? This is this is pre COVID. 
Okay, so the numbers can really change now by being influenced from what's happened over the last four months. It's a great, it's a great question. Yeah, th th this was done at the end of last year. Um, I think it was done January 2020. Uh, okay. I published this in March, so right before COVID hit. So it'd be yeah. very interesting to see how this does affect it, how this is affected by the COVID situation. Yeah, and I think I've seen in some plant-based news just that shift already starting to even increase and speed up because of COVID and what, what's happened there. It's a great point. I mean, especially on the retail side of our business, um, yeah. you know, the, the shelves are empty as well in terms of, you know, same as like meat, you know, the, a lot of the uh, the plant-based stuff's in demand as well. Uh, US, North America, US and Canada. You know, it's also interesting, and I'm sure you guys have seen this as well, but a lot of the uh, customers and people and the restaurateurs that we're working with and we're talking to, you're starting to hear this as a subject. And it was interesting, one of my teams was actually mentioning this the other day that, you know, this was pre-COVID, was they were talking about plant-based diets and ideas and in ingredients and recipes on restaurant menus. Uh, you know, let's say a year ago, it would be once every month. Prior to COVID, it was at least every day. They were starting to do that with customers that we were having in across Canada. Um, so I do see it, it was speeding up then. And then what I've heard through the COVID that it's even accelerated more and we've, we've seen customers. That's why today is so great to have Chef Show ideas around this because it is something I think people, and I don't want to say it's a trend because I really believe it's, it's, a, it's a new area. It's a new, it's a new uh, category that we get to play with on menus. Awesome. It's, a great, it's a great point, and it segues into the next slide. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think you hit it perfectly right off the bat in, in terms of being a favorite subject for yourself. Uh, I feel the same way, and I do believe um, you know, uh, that's not actually a tr a, just a trend. Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot, um, uh, from just from, from other family, friends or, or customers is, is like, do we expect this to stay? And so, uh, we put together just, again, I don't think this would surprise anybody, but, um, I won't run through all the points, but basically we're seeing an annual growth rate of about 15%. And this is the global market. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the North Americans actually higher than this and Canada is actually higher than the U S. Um, but we're seeing about 15% annually. So, you know, by the time 2026 rolls around, you're talking about a $30 billion um, kind of industry market there. Um, so, the, I mean, you know, this really speaks to why it's so important, you know, to kind of like ad adopt this uh, and it's going to be here to stay. Um, yeah. and, and for, you know, obviously again, some of the core people then ask, well, okay, well, you know, uh, you know, is it just millennials is, you know, and, and for the most part, yes, millennials, Gen X and Gen Y are the, some of the core consumers. Um, but the most interesting point to me on the slide uh, really is that, you know, um, kind of over 60% of the actual respondents from North, and this is from a market to market poll uh, with the source below, almost over 60% of them actually, you know, hope it stays and would consider having this, uh, you know, in the future, not not just to try it once and, uh, and kind of turf it. So, yeah, you know what, I've seen it. It's interesting because I, I totally agree with you regarding that millennials and the area, like the, I would say is our target business that we're going after in the food service industry is really that area, right? We're trying to go after millennials and Gen Z because that's obviously the ones that are going to have the, the spend in the area that we want to influence to come to our restaurants and to order our food. But that, that next one there, I do see also helps uh, say to me that it's going to stick is when you see the Gen X, the baby boomers, um, these older generations are, are starting to support this even more. And I've seen it in healthcare now, um, which is growing as well. I'm, I'm sure you guys are probably seeing that as well. But um, those things, I think, when you see those notes being played, it tells me it's here to stay. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And and actually, some of the studies we have also, and again, you, can, you know, this is this is across the internet. You can find this anywhere, and it's pretty consistent across the studies. Is that, um, and, and again, this is a question that gets gets asked a lot. Is is, is people aren't just necessarily trading down from meat or not trading down, but trading from meat to, you know, to plant-based, you know, they're actually trying to adopt it, you know, in, in addition. Yeah. And we've, we've done some research too, because one of the questions is I just don't want to trade down my, you know, my, my, uh, my, my consumer uh, to a less expensive option when they could have a steak. Uh, mm -hmm. We're seeing actually on the retail side of the business, um, which ties kind of into the food service side is roughly 30% are kind of new users uh, are coming into the category. So, Again, like this isn't necessarily going to trade down your, your 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 sale. This is more just about you know they're looking for variety, which I think we well, all yeah yeah you're right, and I think that's I think 
we believe it's it's choice, right? It, we have to offer more choices. The world wants more choices uh, that are out there. And I, I'm just, I, I love this category. I love this area that we're seeing grow um, and continue to grow. I, I think it's fascinating. I really I was do. I was such a plant-based nerd before being a plant-based guy myself. Before I even got into this role, I've, you know, too, from the office, I'd be listening to podcasts and try and just, you know, get as much absorbed yeah. information, you know, just because I find it, um, I find it so interesting. And, and again, speaks to the, the staying power of it. So awesome stuff. Next slide. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I wanted to include this. Um, I, I think really this, again, no surprise to anybody, you kind of see what's in the market there. Um, and this kind of speaks to the global uh, piece I was talking about earlier. Um, this is just some examples of some of the, you know, some, some of the major kind of, you know, banners and stuff that are te either testing the product, uh, which typically then goes uh, full time on the menu. Uh, there's been a few tests that haven't gone to, you know, uh, as well as some of the, you know, I think some of the brands would like, but, uh, and that's across, across the board. But for the most part, almost every one of the big chains is exploring um, bringing plant-based into their menu either full-time or as a test. And that goes for China. It goes, some of the, the big ones we see are, are Australia, China, UK, uh, and North America. They're kind of leading the charge on that front. So, Yeah, it's huge. And I think it, it's funny how it's, it's starting to also influence other areas, not necessarily in the food service, but I've seen it in fashion. And I was trying to pull up a picture of my vegan or my plant-based shoes I saw that uh, came out yesterday. And I'm not sure if it was Nike or Adidas, but someone came up with plant-based shoes. Huh. <laughs> so it's, it's funny because I think that also tells about the power of what this is, is it's not necessarily always related to food, but it's starting to, and I think that might be also driven by millennials and Gen Z as well. Um, because they're very, and then also social media and all these other avenues. Um, but I, I, I actually saw it. I was trying to pull it up on my phone here. I saw it yesterday and I was like, Ooh, we're doing a talk about it tomorrow. So yeah. it, it's awesome though. Really awesome stuff here. I'm super excited about yeah. this. And I like when you paint a KFC green, you know, it sticks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, again, it, that, that's across brands, right? That's just not our, that's just not our brand. Like, you know, that's, you know, I, I think for the most part, like I'm supportive of all the other, you know, the, the competition, I think they're all in it for the right reasons and we're all in it together. So, you, you know, and everyone kind of brings a unique different offering and spin on the plant-based meat alternative space. So. Awesome. Awesome. So can we move where, where do we want to move now? No. Over so, me. Over to Jeff. All right. Thank you, Jeff. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we've got quite a few products we want to take a look at today. The first one, and of course, the crown jewel for us is our Light Life Burger. Uh, we're going to just, but before we get to it, we want to sort of talk a little bit about when we say pea protein, it's made with pea protein. I can tell you that a year and a half ago, I had to ask the question, what exactly are we talking about here? So I needed something in my head to really be able to grasp what the, what the volume of this burger is. And so just to be able to show you here, this is what the pea protein is that we work with. So it comes out like a flake like this. So this is a this is a uh, Canadian grown yellow pea that is cooked, pureed, spread out, and, and dried up, and it, it, they, they scrape it up to, to get this type of a mixture. From here, it's going to get rehydrated with all the, the oils, the flavors, the seasoning, and, and water to uh, make up the burger itself. So I just want everybody to sort of see exactly what we're working with here. It's that, that is the base when you're talking about pea protein products. And a lot of people just hadn't seen that before. So I'm, glad to be able to have that. I'm glad you show that because you hear it everywhere. You yeah. Hear and it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's very, it's just very light and easy to work with. And this is what uh, Violet's team is working on when they, when they redo and when they make another new product. So when we talk today, uh, I'm going to actually cook up uh, one of the light life burgers. And this is actually going to be the burger 2.0. And you can see in there, you can see the coconut flakes and everything in there. So I'm going to cook that up. But I think what we'll do is we're going to ask, uh, I'll let um, Violet actually just sort of talk about the evolution of this product from the original burger to the 2.0 and the improvements we've made while I cook a couple of these up. Perfect. So Violet, I have a question for you. That plant, sure. I, I see that everywhere, those pea proteins. Is that, is that, are we going to see that evolve to other areas, not just always using pea proteins or the different ingredients coming in? Yeah, absolutely. There are, it, 
the industry seems to come up with uh, a different type of ingredient almost every day. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, you know, textured proteins really started with soy. Soy was the evolution for for the market back in mm -hmm. the 80s and 90s um, and was incorporated into a lot of meat products as like a, a protein extender, right? It was cheap uh, a filler as they would uh, talk about it before. And now that was the backbone for building on these new proteins. So, um, you know, each protein has its own functionality and how, how they can texturize it. So we, over time, as they build the science behind it, they're able to create these different textures using different proteins. So we've seen fava coming out, um, you know, and, uh, and mixtures of different proteins to create different shapes, colors, um, and and bite um, for for products. So it's uh, it's great to to work with uh, suppliers in the industry to create new um, textures for products. Yeah, and I think that's probably just going to evolve more and more. Yes, absolutely. Um, now, does those where is that farm most of the time? Does a lot of Canadian farmers are producing a lot of those pea proteins? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of farms in. Um, Saskatchewan and uh, Alberta and a, a lot of the primary processing takes place in Canada and uh, to create these products so it's it's great to um, you know be able to source from Canada and then from there we can create it into different uh, textures or powders or whatever suits our needs that's really cool really really cool so how's that process done it must take quite a bit uh, yeah, absolutely. So it's it really comes down to working with um, suppliers who have those capabilities. Um, it, it's very similar to making cereal. Um, it's called mm -hmm. extrusion. Yeah, so uh, it's all about high pressure and, and heat to create these uh, types of ingredients. Um, and it's it's it tends to be a little bit more of an art and combination with the science to get it dialed in perfectly to to get the expected delivery of, of textures. So. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know coming from the farming community, Chef Kepi will be poking me about that, that we do see a lot of farmers um, moving to, you know, lentils and peas and different things instead of their typical canola, canola fields. You see it across. You don't see the yellow fields as much as you used to. Yeah, that's right. Really cool. So, Chef, back to you. Okay, so uh, I, ju I just had the, the burgers on the flat top here. Now, Again, the, the cooking on this has to change from what, what everyone expects. It's basically three and a half minutes aside and you're ready to go. You can still get a little bit of pink on the inside of it, but that's all it really requires to get fully cooked and, and brought, brought back up the temperature. So uh, for what we're doing right here, I was just gonna finish one off here just to show you. So that's off of a flat top. Uh, I get the requests all the time. How else can we cook this product? And if you look at the, uh, the other screen there, Jay. Yeah. Uh, nice and tight in on that. Uh, I've, I've got a burger done up as a flat top. Um, I, I've had requests, so I have proven the fact that it will do a deep fry as well. And obviously, no. <laughs> but the ass was done. You did it just deep fry a burger. Well, <laughs> same thing. Same thing. There's a lot of people out there that like to deep fry breakfast sausages, but nice. uh, we awesome. have to make sure that it works. There's some there's some forms these things don't work in, but. Uh, this burger is going to work out great for you in any of those applications. It holds up really well, very little shrink on the product. Uh, so along with the burger, though, we also have the Light Life Grounds. So that is the same product. It's coming IQF frozen in a smaller package like this that you're going to be able to then mix in and make into whatever you want to work with. So this basically is a replacement for ground beef. So if you're dealing with, if you want, if you have your own bolognese sauce that you make in-house, now you can make a vegan or a vegetarian version of that, the exact same product. The ground, the ground holds up the exact same way as ground beef will. It looks like it. It does. It it and you can add whatever you want to it and finish it off. And so now you can start making uh, light life meatloafs. You can do lasagnas. You can do your bolognese, obviously. Uh, the other one you can go to is to do something as simple as making meatballs. So now from an appetizer perspective, even if you have something like a meatball, you can, you can charge more for it. And it's more of an interesting item for someone to be able to say you're having a vegan meatball. But I also just even take, I take some of our chow cheese, which we'll talk about in a second here, 
which is a vegan cheese, and put a little bit of chow cheese inside your meatball, and now you've got a, a cheese a, a, a chow stuffed meatball. So basically, a cheese stuffed meatball that is vegan, and that's going to bake up beautifully. So mm -hmm. what I did for it today, uh, we've got two, two two plates here just to show you. I did some appetizers up with it, so you can do a light life meatball. Or you can do a uh, uh, an oversized cheese filled meatball for a pasta dish, and so it's just another it's another application. We're at, we're not asking your kitchen to retrain and do a new method of, of uh, cooking. It's the same recipe they're doing now, except in place of ground beef, you're using light life grounds, and you're actually going to get a, a better yield than you will with ground beef. So, so Violet, I'm going to ask you a question here, Royal Chefs. Those are beautiful, by the way, Chef. Um, Thank you. We'd be very proud as flexitarians by having any of those. But well, and, and so go ahead. well, I'll just say too, Jay. I mean, these type of products, you're not you're not having a sacrifice as far as uh, uh, for, for for the rest of the meat eaters out there. Like mm -hmm. this is it has a great bite. It has a great flavor. Now it is it has improved exponentially to the point wow. where everybody everybody can enjoy a few of these uh, throughout the week. Yeah, and that's kind of like what Brad was talking about. Is it, it's not that we're converting it's almost like you're just adapting or uh, uh, just um adopting this into your diet and i love it i love yeah. it now I'm violet sure. after a few question violet is how healthy is this compared like, let's, let's talk health a little bit on this sure so, uh, what's the comparison on health I mean, is this better for me like um with the uh, where we were going, um, you know, we look at both our competitors and we look at um, where beef is. The The biggest impact is on the saturated fat. Um, so where the fat might be pretty much in line with a burger that you get off the market, um, the saturated fat is significantly lower in the, in the realm of, you know, 60% lower than saturated fat from, from beef. Um, we, we definitely claim that on our retail packaging, it's not something that we um, necessarily put on our, our food service um, letters, but, and, and protein is in line. Where we've significantly improved things from our 1.0 version is looking at things like sodium impact. Um, you know, we were one of the higher uh, sodium levels out of the, the plant-based burgers, and we've significantly reduced that by looking at technologies to reduce uh, to remove yeast extract, um, but still maintain uh, our good beefy flavor. So, though, so that because I noticed over the last year, a lot of plant-based products are tasting better. Is that why you guys are just figuring out the formulas better? Um, it, it's also about trying out new ingredients that are available in the market, um, understanding what their functionalities are and how can they can benefit um, the rest of the matrix. We went from the ground up again on our 2.0. Uh, mm -hmm. We completely, um, you know, left behind our 1.0 and and looked at how we could simplify the ingredients but deliver even better flavor. Yeah, that's, I, I noticed they taste so. When they first came out, I, I won't I won't lie. We went and I bought a whole bunch of people the the uh, the one product out there. I won't mention who they are. Um, because the maple leaf gods will come down on me. But uh, uh, I went and bought it, and I was like, oh, my good Lord, it didn't taste that very good at the beginning. But sure, has it ever changed now as they figure out the right formulas? And, and if I could jump in there quickly, Jay, just to, to comment on yeah. that as a plant-based guy myself, uh, two, two kind of points. One on the, on the is it healthier and cleaner. And I would just say to Violet's point, so like, their team is never really uh, satisfied with it. So they're, you know, I won't share too much. You know, she can talk to it, but they're already looking at version 3.0 uh, and trying to get it uh, cleaner. Less ingredients is key, lower lower sodium as well, uh, as well as trans fats. So it, it's, it's a constantly moving moving machine there. And and to your other point on uh, on, on flavor, I, I completely agree. Um, I used to consume the 1.0 beforehand. And one of the biggest improvements I, I've seen in the 2.0 and and again, this, I think if anyone's tried it, it won't surprise them is, you know, there's a bit of sometimes an, an, an odor that gives off. I was going to say the smell, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the aftertaste. There's a big, you know, sometimes an yeah. aftertaste. I think the 2.0 does a phenomenal job, and I'm not just saying this, um, of kind of like reducing, if not eliminating that altogether. And when you when people try the 2.0, I think they'll definitely see the same thing. So, Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that smell because there was a very chemical 
process smell to it. Yeah, and that's that's in the market too. And I'm not just speaking about our product, but in general, like I've, I've noticed yeah. that with 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 other products as well. So absolutely, we don't talk about smells. We talk about aromas. Aromas. Oh, sorry, sorry, aromas. <laughs> Back to you, Fine line. Fine line. <laughs> okay, aroma. Let's see what you got next. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, the, the the pea protein and the burger is a great one. The other, the next product we're going to look at is actually from the field roast lineup, and they have two products that are anybody that knows that I've done these presentations, I love phenomenally. So we have a field roast uh, chipotle crumble. So this is a uh, a grain based product. So this is a, a grain based product that is kneaded together, very similar to a bread, and then it is cooked and crumbled, and then we work from there. So what you end up with is you start off with a package like this, a frozen crumble, and just so you can see how it how it reacts. Right out of the package, it's already down to the right size uh, pieces right away. Now, this is a fully cooked, sorry? It looks amazing. It, 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 and it tastes amazing. Uh, this is a fully cooked product, so you can eat this right now. So this can go straight onto a salad as a topper. This can go in a salad bar as well. But the best, where we where this really shines is when we start cooking with it. So it, it basically can be treated like a fully cooked sausage crumble that you already have. So you got all this flavor in here. And so this is a Mexican Chipotle. It's got a bit of a kick to it. It's got a lot of paprika in there. So it's going to put a bit of a stain to, the, to any kind of a bread. But even just working off of a flat bread like this, putting on such a tiny little bit of crumble onto it, like, and away you go. So that's going to cook off just like any other ingredient on your pizza. I think those, no, those flavor profiles are definitely going to, are going to be sophisticated for you. Those flavor profiles um, are hitting the millennials and Gen Z, I would say, right? Like, oh, absolutely! Like the, the, a bit of the kick of spice is there. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. yeah it it's that, right? So even just baking off something as simple as that, the way we finish it off, once it comes out of the oven, so you can end up with a product like this. Do a little bit of balsamic glaze across it, and there's your starter plate right, right there. Finished ready to go. That's Brad's lunch, I'm guessing. <laughs> outside, outside of the olives, yes, I would say so. We'll talk about the talk about that later. Okay. Now, so so that that crumble now, uh, it'll work for. Um, we've got it here on a flatbread. It'll work on pizzas. You can make a quesadilla with this. So it's a vegan product that you're gonna that you can uh, keep vegan, or you can add some cheese, and it's just it's still vegetarian. But you're going to be able to make this into uh, flatbreads, pizzas, quesadillas, nacho toppers. Obviously, it can go on top of the salad. It can go into a power bowl. You can do it into a wrap phenomenally as well. Again, it's fully cooked, ready to go right out of the package. The other item that we want to show is the other crumble that we have is an Italian crumble. Now, same texture, same consistency. Slightly more herby on the, on the flavor pro file there a little bit more caraway seed and the like to it but again it's, it's it's a phenomenal product this has the ability it's it's got a lot of flavor but it's mild enough that you can actually adjust this to something you want so you could toss this in a barbecue sauce or something like that if you want to put it onto a pizza just as a mm -hmm. sausage topping but what we wanted to show you today was just a basic a basic build that if you take a product like this if we take some cisco fire roasted tomatoes from casa solana Good I'm plug, good plug, good plug, plug, chef, good plug. You know, a little, a, a few car caramelized onions. Let me see that, okay. Get a couple kidney beans in there. And a little bit of uh, jalapenos, some chili powder, some roasted peppers, and some herb and some black pepper. If you just do all of that, Add in your crumble. In ten minutes, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a vegan chili ready to go. Wow, that's all it's gonna take. Maybe add a little bit of tomato sauce to this. Mm -hmm. So you've got a, you've got a chili that's gonna be able to come up here that will will rival any, anything else that's out there, and it's gonna be vegan, ready to go. We'll just show you the. I have a finished one over on the side there, just to show you. I love your camera guy, by the way. Okay, cool. It's the best um, we can do with this type of a shot, but uh, uh, just to be able to show you that you can quickly make something like this in no time at all, and no one's going to feel like they got 
less than because it was a plant-based product. This is a phenomenal product and it's grain-based. And that's the other piece with all the, all those things that we're going to show you today, because we're not done yet, is that we're, it's not a one trick pony. This is just not, what can we do with pea protein? We've got pea protein. We're doing stuff with tofu. We're doing stuff with tempeh. All these different things are being used to make, make the different products. So we have a full lineup across the board just to be able to show you different products. So, so can I ask Violet on tofu? Violet, can I ask you questions on tofu? Sure. So what's happening with tofu? Because it's kind of taken the back seat lately. I don't hear much of it. Is it still around? Like, what's the future of the tofu? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. We uh, we actually do limited work with tofu. So we focus a lot more on the, the heavier proteins like tempeh, where it's uh, full soybeans, uh, where tofu... Um, it still has a purpose in, in cooking and it's, uh, you know, brings a great texture depending on your functionality. You can incorporate into desserts like it's so neutral in flavor. Um, mm. It's easy to build upon. So I, I still think tofu has a place um, in, in this world. It's just, uh, you know, how you incorporate it into dishes. So one, one area where we do use tofu is in our chow cheese. Um, and so we we ferment it to create this silken um, tofu and incorporate it into the cheese and it delivers a great uh, mouthfeel and adds a little bit of extra flavor where some of the other plant-based cheeses don't have that. And, and it's funny, it's funny, Jay, you brought up tofu, but uh, you know, it's, maybe you don't see it as much, but it actually when you look at the kind of the market and, 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 and kind of the types of different proteins and alternative proteins, mm -hmm. tofu is still growing at 30% in the latest 52 weeks. Uh, really? uh, yep. It's just kind of being overshadowed. And this is the food service market. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the retail would be the same. I just verified that, but, uh, it's just being overshadowed to your point by, by, you know, the burgers and yeah. you know, some of the other products that are out there. The jackfruit, kind of, things like that. Oh yeah. Jackfruit. Like, yeah, absolutely. I just started seeing more retail jackfruit come into the market lately as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Definitely great product out there. And, uh, yeah, it's funny you say t tofu and, um, because I have seen it a little, but it has been overshadowed with the burgers that are coming out. And I was doing some research around that as well, just on the whole, you know, why did we start with burgers? Why didn't we start in a different category? And it just seems like it was such a low risk area to play around with before we played with other areas of food. Yeah. And I think the burger for sure is just, it's just so universal. And yeah. I mean, it really like, you know, if, if you think of like the flexitarian versus like the vegan or the vegetarian, which is really where the market is. Uh, the flexitarians were really where we want to be, where we want to play. Um, <clears throat> the burger is probably the most transferable uh, and most universal that way. So that's probably why you've seen it. And, and, and Violet could talk to it, not, not me, but uh, was, was a little bit uh, you know, for, for most of the, the, um, the brands out there to, to replicate meat. Uh, they, everyone kind of started with beef and that was probably the easiest, whereas chicken's yeah. been a lot tougher, but we can talk about that later on. We can talk. To, I can't wait to talk chicken. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, chef. So uh, one of the other new products that we're just launching right now, we actually have, uh, it is a pea-based protein product. It is a, a new breakfast sandwich patty. So this is going to be able to sit parallel with your pork, set, pork breakfast sausage patty. And again, we also have a fully cooked uh, meat chorizo sausage patty. Now we've got a plant-based uh, um, field roast uh, sausage patty here. And uh, you can see with the other camera there, I've just got them on the grill. These are gonna, th these will microwave inside of the sandwich. They can, uh, they, they can work off the flat top here. They can be done in the oven or in a turbo oven, the same way you would treat any other fully cooked sausage patty. Mm -hmm. So it's got a great flavor, st strong herb flavor in it already. So it's gonna match up with all the other products. Again, we're not asking your staff to change any of their methods. We're just adding one more ingredient that they're gonna be able to sell to more people. People are gonna try this product and they'll come back to it. It's not a one trick pony for sure. It's something you're gonna to wanna to have a second time. So when we're doing something like that, all those different cooking methods you're gonna be able to finish off with. And then again, you can match the television, just start from over and you can have two or three different uh, breakfast sausage patties and spinach with or without egg, depending on what you want to do. Uh, you can use the chow cheese on there and keep it vegan, anything you want. But it's an easy, easy new opportunity for you to uh, have another op 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 option on the menu. Those look awesome. Those look awesome. And then we've got one more product that we want to talk to you about. Brad's been working a lot with this one. Uh, 
We've got we've got a sliced tempeh product that's smoked, and it is a for for a for a bacon equivalent. It it uh, it's it's an amazing <coughs> product. Uh, we'll show you here. This is the this is the pack size in, re in retail. What you would end up with is th this is a light life product. But you can also see right here. I've taken some of them out of the package. They're already pre sliced, and it's got again that that all that color is pure smoke going on to that. So I'm going to uh, flash this onto the grill. So this can go into the grill, onto a grill, into the oven, whatever you need it to, and you're going to get a great bacon flavor out of it. No way. And while and while Chef does that, I can kind of talk to Tempe a little bit too. That, yeah. Tempe is one of the ones that's kind of um, it's it, it's less known. Obviously, it's less in the forefront. Uh, it, it, it's but it's been a what I would deem a vegan staple for a long time, like like tofu Jay, like you mentioned. Uh, and Light Life uh, actually initially started producing just tofu out of our, uh, our sorry, tempeh out of our, um, our, our Massachusetts plant. That plant was specifically built just for tempeh. Um, some of the benefits people ask, okay, so I understand it. Um, some of the benefits of it are, are, are it's, less, it's less processed than, say, what most tofus would be. Uh, and, and it's a prebiotic, right? So you got a lot of like, like, because of the natural process of how they create tofu in terms mm -hmm. of you know, kind of packing the soybeans together and letting them the kind of the healthy bacteria, as I would call it. Some people see it as, you know, mold or whatever, but it's actually a type of healthy bacteria that are, we all need. Uh, kind of does its work in over 48 hours. You've got a product that looks like tofu and you can either slice it like we've done, or you can actually keep it in a block. Uh, you can cube it, et cetera. But it's, it's definitely one of those things that, uh, that uh, is, is growing as well. And I think you're going to see, uh, I think you're going to see temp uh, tempeh a lot more on some of the menus in the next couple of years. Yeah, I would assume. I just, I'm blown away by it. Yeah. High, this, protein, high protein. Uh, again, it's, it, it's, it's typically thought of a, as like a, again, a cleaner version of, of what tofu would be. Okay. So uh, obviously, so, so we've got, we're going to finish heating that up a little bit and we're going to make a, a, um, a vegan BLT. It has another application too, if you can imagine making a, uh, a vegetarian uh, Caesar salad. This can replace your ba the bacon that would have been in there so the flavor can be more true than just having a garlic garlic mayonnaise type of a, of, a, of a dressing to it. So it has a home there. This can top a burger if it, if it has to. The BLT is obviously its home. Uh, this had a bit of an Instagram uh, moment in the States a year and a bit ago with uh, Whole Foods because they do a BLT, uh, a, a, a plant-based BLT down there using this product, and it it went off like wildfire. So yeah. it's a, it's a great add-on. It's an upsell, and it's just another option for everyone. So if you want to, we'll just show you the, the the BLT sandwich. Just I didn't put any mayo or anything on it, but we're just we're just be able to show you. You can have a piled up sandwich ready to go. That's crazy awesome. And wow. it's going to be coming to you in a in a in a, in a food service pack sliced. And then all you have to do is heat that product up. It'll come from it, 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 it doesn't take a long time to, to cook. No, it, it, it's it's it, a minute a minute aside is all you really need. You're just bringing it back up to temperature. You can make it crispier if you want, but mm -hmm. uh, the flavor is there. It, it, the, the smoke is phenomenal on it. It's uh, it really does work. We have a plain version in retail as well, but it is basically a blank slate. Um, mm -hmm. So so it's something that chefs would have to do a lot to to. To make it their own this product is standalone it, it's a phenomenal phenomenal build awesome i'm blown away i'm blown away so there's 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 talk of even doing a few more things from the tempeh side but for right now the smoke tempeh is the one we that we've got to work with uh again you're we're, we're at think food right now which is where we do all of our product development work and uh violet's been non-stop with her team working on improving and making brand new products coming through. And so we just wanted to say that there is uh, we do have a pea protein hot dog on the way, which we're very, we're very happy about. And the other one is the poultry, which I'll let Brad and uh, Violet talk about. Right. I got to talk to Violet about this hot dog thing. I'm not gonna see it okay. because I have for 20 years, because I remember the first vegan hot dog I had, and I, I, I swear it was about 20 some years ago. And we unfortunately we microwaved it. It is the worst thing to do. Um, what is the, like so? What makes a pea protein so great in a hot dog? Like, is it flavor, smell, like all those things that you need in a hot dog? 
<laughs> How close are you guys getting that same experience? Yeah, we took our inspiration from like kosher style hot dogs in the US where That's it's cool. very succulent and juicy or something like our Schneider's Juicy Jumbos. It's very flavor forward with the, the beef flavors, but it's also juicy um, on on the bun and, and fully dressed. Um, it, can stand alone on its own, or you can put it um, fully dressed, as I said. So uh, we worked really hard to to get a great balance between the the beef flavors, the smoke intensity, and uh, while still maintaining that succulent. So it, it took a lot of uh, months of development to get that mm -hmm. one right, um, and we're really proud of it. So we're we're looking at commercializing that um, in the next couple of months for the U.S. and then. Um, and working on one for Canada after that. That's, that's awesome. And I'm sure the aroma, as Chef would put, is, is <laughs> right? It's fantastic. I, yeah, it's a great balance between the smoke and, and the um, the beef flavor. The, the smoke comes through um, using some of our ingredients as well as uh, smoking it in our facilities. No different than you would smoke a hot dog, uh, like a meat-based hot dog. And it has a bit of a snap to it too, like a proper hot dog does. Good, good, good. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I actually every time for Christmas. I can't wait. I actually, before even funny story, I uh, uh, I had I got a, a a quick view to this to this this uh, this product that that Violet and Chef are talking about, and so my wife's pretty picky with some of the plant based meat alternatives, uh, and I had the same experience as you did, Jay, in terms of like an you know an older style kind of like. Uh, plant-based hot dog, very dry. Uh, if you you know blow up, if you're not careful. Uh, yeah. But uh, I actually cooked one of these up on the barbecue uh, one night last week, and uh, I told her it was a a new version of a, of a of a red hot we were doing at Maple Leaf. Okay, yeah. And uh, she actually believed it. She said the color was a little bit different than she would think for a standard red hot, but uh, she was. And when I told her, actually, it was um, a plant-based meal alternative, like obviously a pea protein dog. Uh, she was she was surprised. Uh, so it's it does a very good job, I would say, and, and stands kind of on its own. It's funny you say that. I do the same thing with my kids because I mess with them and I don't tell them that it's plant based. And, I, and I, it's like it's the approval rating if you can pass it by my kids. Uh, and then I go, hey, it's plant based. And they're like, oh, and they're like that's usually the test in my house here. Yeah, that's awesome. So really, it's just the poultry we wanted to be able to talk about a little bit, and uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that to the other two to, to do the discussion on it because it's still uh, in development. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off. And I'll kick it off, and I'll pass it to Violet to, to talk um, technically about it because she's the expert for sure. Um, obviously, you know where we kind of see the market. You know, burgers are growing and they're going to continue to grow, but they've kind of leveled off a little bit. Really, um, where we're expecting and um, kind of the, you know, the market to be in the next couple of years is really towards chicken, just because of the versatility of it. You can put it on so many different dishes. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of universally accepted. Uh, so many cultures uh, consume chicken on a regular basis. And so chicken obviously is growing in itself. Uh, like actual animal chicken is like, like protein is, is growing. Uh, I think it's five times what it was in 1970. So yeah. it's, outpacing, it's outpacing the growth of beef or pork, call it uh, substantially. And uh, and then so obviously there's a demand for the for for for, for a plant based alternative to it. And so Viola can talk to it, and I'll let her talk through the tech. It, it you know basically what we've seen is it's been tougher to replicate for the most part, or to do a good job of replicating an actual animal protein. Uh, and so, but now you know uh, we've we've kind of come to a spot where um, you know we've, we've got a few products we're, we're, that are in development. We're hoping to get it commercialized uh, later this year, if not. Uh, early next year. I won't sign Violet up for that, but I will. I made a note of that. Um, Q4 for Canada. But uh, this one, she there's some samples that I've seen, and I got to be honest, uh, this one really, really fooled me. She's got a couple pictures um, on her phone of development, and she, we were talking about this yesterday, and one of them is an actual uh, chicken tender, and the other one is, a, is our is our plant-based chicken tender, and uh, she often forgets the difference. So I'll let her talk some of the details. <laughs> So why yeah. I tell us more about this because I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing this is probably way more trickier to get right than the beef. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So with, with beef, you have the opportunity to add 
you know, vegetable based colors to get it to a tone that mimics more of a beef color. But with chicken, you have to get it white, <laughs> getting a, something that looks beige or yellow to get it to go backwards to look white is is not an easy feat. Um, and we're not interested in using artificial colors. Um, so it's more about processing and identifying those ingredients that can really, um, you know, get to a white hue. Um, so we've been working a lot with suppliers to get a custom um, product made so that we can utilize that to mimic chicken. And it, uh, the other aspect of it is mimicking those larger um, chicken fibers. So you want it to pull apart very similar to chicken, more whole muscle than sectioned and formed. So that's something that we've spent a lot of time on to get the right bite um, and including it into, you know, more of a breaded application. So yeah, the team is still uh, working through the development of that. And then we'll, we'll be looking at commercializing um, probably Q1 of, of 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna be huge. I just think chicken is an area, if you can get that right. And I think Chef was telling me about the pull of it and it's gotta have that when you pull it apart and all these uh, different aspects that are important when you want to look for chicken. That's gotta be tricky. Especially white, I never thought of it. How do you make it white? That's blows my mind. Proprietary. <laughs> you aroma, chef? <laughs> no, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not going to be, we're not going to be giving away the secrets. We're just telling you that there's stuff coming. But. <laughs> it's behind that wall. It's behind that wall. Exactly. Right behind that wall. So that was sort of what we had for you today. Um, again, we're really excited. This this part of our business is exploding, and uh, uh, the, the product development team is going nonstop in all the different aspects of this. And we're, again, it's not just one thing. There's so many different projects on the go. There's there's one you can tease it with, and I, I I wouldn't do it justice if I didn't mention it. But we've got a pepperoni coming, which is which was is it's. Very impressive. The team is rushing to get it out into the market properly, but uh, there's there's a pepperoni coming, a sliced pepperoni coming that's going to knock your socks off. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, and I think that's going to be huge for the market as well, right? <clears throat> Unbelievable. So, well, thanks again. You know, outstanding job, Chef, as always. Great ideas, Violet. I could just listen to you talk all day about this. <laughs> <laughs> like. The science, you gotta have a cool job. That's oh, it's cool. amazing. Yeah, and I have an amazing team to get all this stuff done, so. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Chef, can we just look at one more time at all the food you did? Bring it yeah. up there. Actually, let's we'll 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 get it really quick. So everything from the, from the pea protein on. So that, uh -huh. we've got our the Light Life Burger that you can cook a number of different ways. We've got the, the grounds that you can make into meatballs, bolognese, Pasta, in any kind of dish you want to do that where you use ground beef, you can now use that. Our chow cheese, which is a creamy, amazing product. Uh, then we have the crumbles. You've got the chorizo crumble and the and the Italian uh, crumble as well. So many different ways to use those products. And then obviously we have the new breakfast sausage patty that's coming out right now, and the tempeh, the smoked tempeh. So yeah, I'm gonna do tempeh. I'm going to the store. I'm gonna do that today. I see. This is what happens: is I do these shows, and then I, I go back to my <laughs> my house or I go to the house for my studio garage, and uh, <laughs> and I make all the food that our chefs and our, our guests make. So thanks again. Outstanding ideas. Yep. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone. Brad, Violet, pleasure meeting you, and pleasure hearing all the amazing things you guys are doing. Um, I'm super excited because you know be. Uh, a, Flexitarian, I gotta be careful. Um, because I'm in Alberta. It, it, uh, <laughs> you gotta be flexitarian here. Um, it is something that I'm excited about. And I think that the sky is, I think we're just gonna see this grow and grow, especially in restaurants. I'm excited because from a chef perspective, we get to play with a whole new category. And when's the last time a category's come into our industry? Never, yeah. really. <laughs> right? It's the like, oh, huge. Sorry, Chef? The learning curve is huge. Yeah, and that's risk and innovation and playing around with different ingredients, all these different things. I'm excited because it really gives us a new playing field that we really haven't had forever, right? So awesome stuff, awesome stuff. So right. thanks again, everyone else that's watching our show. 
Um, please check out Maple Leafs products and all the great things. Is there a website that they can go to and learn more? Uh, yeah, no. The uh, right now it's just getting ready to launch. It's going to be uh, thinkfoodservice.ca. It's not it's just getting ready to launch. I know Kate will kill me for that one. I know. Thank um, you. <laughs> anyways, thanks again, everyone. And you know what? Have a great rest of your day. Uh, next week, we have more shows coming every day, and uh, we have a special show announcement uh, this weekend and uh, for next week, and we'll uh, talk soon. But anyway, else, thanks so much, and all the best, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks, guys.